I sure will. Uh, good morning, everybody. You're listening to The Voice. Uh, come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey. I got a radio show. Somebody sent me an email one day, that, you know, kind of a nasty little email. <laughs> you know, I think I said it once before, Steve Harvey trying to be a preacher. Man, I'm so far from being a preacher, man, I can't even tell you. But what I am trying to do is share information. Now, I understand how haters work, and I understand how the devil works. Believe me, I do. You know, sometimes even he, the devil, surprises me at the level and the angles of attack they use. You know, which I go, wow, man, I didn't, I didn't see that one. Ooh, that was pretty slick. I got I give you credit on that when you try to get me. But every time you try to get me, I get saved. I get saved every time, man. Because, because God got me. God got some angels camped around me. That's what my mom used to always say as a Sunday school teacher. Never really understood it, but you know, when I was growing up as a kid, but I got it now. He got some angels around me. And the angels come in the form sometimes of people. People who pull your coat to this or introduce you to that or reveal some information to you like this. He got them all around me. So, see, having a relationship with God, what's been beneficial to me, y'all, is not just that what he gives to me, but what he protects me from. And, you know, some some people wonder, well, if you were God, why he let them people do that to you? No, that's not how it works. See, there's two forces in this world. There's good and there's evil. And if you succumb to good, that's what you become. That's what you do. But everybody don't succumb to good. Some people succumb to evil. Some people's mission is to hate, to destroy, to tear down. And so that force is at work in this world, too. And when that force comes up against me, what well, God never promised me that I wouldn't see none of that, that I wouldn't see the attacks that I would not come under fire, that I would not be falsely accused. He didn't say that. Matter of fact, he forewarned me that it would happen. But what he does give me in those moments are moments of comfort and peace, knowing that he's with me. And that no matter what my enemy does to bring me down, it ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. So come if you want to. Fight if you will. I have a man that has been attacking me since I owned the comedy club in Dallas. He has been on a mission. And then if I don't give him $5 million, he gonna do it. He done done everything, man. He has done everything. Now he done messed around and got himself now claiming in his letters physically ill. And his illnesses and what's befallen his family, he's blaming that on me too. Had Steve Harvey not stressed me out and paid me this money he owed me. Where, where, where are you coming with this? He just has kept on and on and on. And you know what? He done messed around and got himself sick. He done messed around, man, got himself in some situation. And can I tell you something? It's been going on since 19, uh, maybe 97. He started the attack. When I first went on, no, before that, <laughs> probably 95. He started the attacks in 95. Every now and then, he done got six lawyers. All the lawyers done dropped the case after they come in and they discover the fact. But he's steady trying. But it's the angels that's around. Him. And I forewarned him several times, man. Hey, man, if I was you, I'd go ahead on. Because what I'm not going to do is bend. Because, see, you cannot break me. Because I happen to be a soldier for Christ. I happen to be an imperfect soldier for Christ. There's nothing, man. There's nothing. And oh, oh, and it ain't like a bunch of people done tried now. Oh, y'all been on YouTube. Y'all been on the internet. Oh, they done tried. Oh, they done put some dirt on me, man. That ain't true. But if you keep looking at me, though, and I am not the prize, but if you put your eyes on God, it's where you go. But if you look at me, he's covered me through it all. And that's been the importance of the relationship I form with God. Is that I know that I'm under his wings. 
that I'm ever under his ever loving protection that he got me. And I just want to share that with you, that if you got, if you're looking for some protection, if you're looking for a way to have the strength to get through what you're going through, get some God, man. If 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 you want a way out, get some God, man. If you've been gang banging and you're sick of gang banging, get you some God, man. If you're tired of being on drugs and you're tired of drinking, get you some God, man. If you're tired of being, if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, get you some God, man. I'm just telling you now. If you're trying to make your dreams come true. And it look like you ain't going to make it. And you still believe that that's for you. Get you some God, man. If you're setting a new goal, dream, or aspiration, and you're trying to get there, and you're going to start out today, get you some God, man. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. See, it's real what I'm saying, man. I ain't no fake dude with it. You understand? I'm just telling you real. Get you some God, man. And be patient. Have faith. Believe. Don't doubt. But Lord have mercy, get ready to work your tail off. Did you hear me? Get you some faith. Believe. Don't doubt. And get ready to work your tail off. God can't bless him. You see, a lot, a lot of times we go to God asking for prayers and stuff, but we go to him and we don't give nothing, God nothing to bless. We want blessings, but we don't give him nothing to bless. You make one step, he'll make two. You start, he'll finish. You come, he'll go. You dream it, he'll build it. You start it, he'll finish it. See, you see, you trying everything your way. I'm going to go to court. I had a conversation with a man yesterday. Just sitting, just called me, man, and was just talking about, but Steve, you know, Man, I, 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 this dude been owing me $2,300 for four years. I just asked him, have you survived the four without the $2,300? Yeah, man. How much you think you done spent trying to get to $2,300? Just a few hundred. Now, let me ask you something. Do you have a few hundred more to try to get this $2,300 that you've been trying to get for four years? Yeah, I could do that. But do you want to, man? Do you have the time? to dedicate four more of your years to try to get 2300 But, Steve, I'm out of work right now. I done fell on some hard times. I could use that money. And I've been praying to God to help me. Yeah, you've been praying to God to help you. God probably got something way greater for you, but you got to let go of your own thinking and let God have his way. You understand? You feel me? You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Now, my uncle has been doing the twos, altitude. Uh, 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 we're not going to do twos today. We're not going to do that. We're going to do, uh, 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 if, if you gravitate, domesticate, uh, 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 annihilate, originate, fornicate, uh, yeah, mm, 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 and then fornicate. Hey, uh, hey. Are you, are oh. you for real right now? <laughs> Take that back. Take that back. Take yeah. that back. Okay. Uh, if you gravitate, uh, uh, domesticate, uh, uh-huh. uh, annihilate, then you will educate, celebrate. Levitate, yeah. Celebrate you will celebrate. Lot. Yeah. 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 We're doing the eights. We're not doing mm-hmm. the twos. We're doing the eights. The eights. <laughs> gravitate, domesticate, <laughs> annihilate, celebrate, <laughs> fornicate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're doing the eighth. That's what we're doing. We're doing the eighth. From you, <laughs> and, and that's where it and it originate from here. Thank you. Okay, mm-hmm. boy, boy, that boy, he, he ain't he ain't colder than me. He ain't colder than me. I'm just oh, saying. Oh, it's a competition. <laughs> it's a competition. Okay. It's the twos. Yeah. It's the twos against the eighth. The twos against the eighth. <laughs> we <right>? appreciate. Yeah. <laughs> but and then you have to appreciate. <laughs> People who oh. use sofa eight. Mm-hmm. Ooh. <laughs> Come on, Junior. <laughs> yeah. You can get all eight. the eights. Yeah. <laughs> they get deep. Scratch <laughs> your yeah. dandruff when you use sofa eight. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Congratulate. Come, yeah. And then at the end of the day, you will congratulate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go ahead. Come on. Hate, hate. I got no, one. No, don't hate. Yeah. Hey. That's an eight. That's an eight. Hate. 
<laughs> All okay, the eights. The eights <laughs> is better than the twos. I'm just trying to tell you. <laughs> The only eights. three twos. Yeah. yeah, he ain't got but three twos. But the mm -hmm. eights continue to go on. All, all right, all right. Yeah. Top of the morning, baby. This is the Steve yeah. Harvey Morning Show. It is the baddest morning show in Wait, the I land. Got one more. All right. I'm sorry, I got one more. Don't be Do late. <laughs> and then don't be late. <laughs> and don't Which some be of y'all are right now this morning. You are late <laughs> mm. to Ooh. congratulate. Ooh. And, and, oh. and, and, and now you cannot participate. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Oh, All right. oh man, wait a minute, I got an eight. <laughs> go ahead, go, go, go. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna let you litigate it. Go ahead, go ahead, litigate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna say right now, and if you if you running late, then you could get a speed ticket and have to take it up with your court magistrate. Oh my god! <laughs> Chris, what? Oh, Junior. What? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes. The eights are over the two. <laughs> and wait a minute. If you're real uh -oh. hot on fire, you got to refrigerate. What? Yes. <laughs> that's I feel the chill country. coming on right yeah. now. Yeah. Because Shirley. you need to refrigerate. Shirley. Boo! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> refrigerate. You always hating, Carla. That's why you came oh. up with hate. You, you know, you know what's Boo. wrong with Carla. You know what's wrong with Carla. She is sitting over there constipate uh, in the situation. No, I ain't. <laughs> <laughs> that boy didn't did something this morning. Minutes. That boy didn't did something. After the hour, it is the nephew and run that prank back right after this. Boo, Celebrate. refrigerate. <laughs> Boo, hate. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it is time now for the nephew to run that prank back. What you got for us, Nev? Is okay. that your husband? Here we go. Come on, Cat. Hello. Hello, I'm trying to reach Karen. This is Karen. Karen, uh, hey, listen, my name is Mark. Are you married to Jason? Yes. Okay. All right. I got the right person. Listen. I don't. I don't even know how to say this to you. My my um. My, like I say, my name is Mark. I follow my wife today. Uh huh. And I right now I'm at a park, and I'm almost certain that my wife is right now. I'm I'm about two or three hundred yards away, but I, I'm almost certain my wife is holding hands uh, with your husband, Jason. So, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. When you see my husband at the park with, with your wife, how long have you been following them? I followed my wife this morning because I just was feeling, like, real weird about, you know, something going on. And I followed her, and I'm at the park right now. And, uh, you know, this. I think this is, I think she's with Jason. I think she's okay. with your husband. What type, what type of car you, do you see Jason in? A Lexus. What color is it? Um, white. Okay, that's him. So he's supposed to have went to work today. And this Sunday, and they had some overtime that he's supposed to be doing at work today. And he's at a <laughs> park with your wife. He's Are at, you close yeah, to them? So I'm not close to him. I'm, uh, you know, I tried to stay back. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold up. She just kissed him. She just kissed who? She just, my wife just kissed your husband. What do you say your, your, wife, your wife's name is again? My wife's name is Veronica. Veronica. Okay, uh, what park they at? Uh, they at Langley Park. I'm Langley at Langley Park. Park right now. I'm under, I'm about 200 yards away from them, and I'm looking at. She just kissed him again. I cannot believe this, man. I know well. You're not telling me that your your wife is kissing my and husband. Uh, what, well, how did you get my number? Let's hold up. Back this up. How did you get my number? And who are you? Like I said, my name is Mark. Uh, a buddy of mine named Fitz. Fitzgerald. Fitz knows. He knows Jason. I don't know and, no. Uh, it's Jerry. I don't want to know how you get my number. Fitz gave me your Fitz, Fitz. Fitz told me he knew Jason in some kind of way. Got me your phone number. I don't even know who he got your number from. All I know is your husband is kissing my wife right now. That's what I know. Okay, you just sitting there watching. Give me the number. We can change this right now. You sitting there watching on some Spectre gadget. I'll go and bust all this up because I don't play that. Cause he said he had to work this morning. Some little overtime. I don't have time. That who does that in the park with some body? It's too cold to be in the park anyway. You can't see no ducks. Give me, give me the address of this Langley Park. Okay, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. They getting a blanket out the car. Now who does that? I know well. He ain't no romantic type of guy. He never take me to no 
car, but they getting a blanket out the car and going deeper into the park. I cannot believe this. They getting the blanket. Well, what? No, she. I know she. Now I'm looking at. Give me wine, the park address. They got you, wine and wine glasses. And a damn me, me. Mark, Mark, Mark. Give me the address of the park. You want some white boy stuff? I'm trying to go. I'll bust that up. I don't have time for that calling me. I'll start it and watching your wife. I'm not gonna watch. And I'm gonna hand him his ass. Okay, let's stop this right now. Take your over there to the park and give him the phone. I don't have time for this. You sitting up there watching your wife with my. You calling me? What kind of are you? Are you okay? I'm, 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 say what? You supposed to be up there getting on that. Because if I was there, I'd be the slap that. And I've been handing him his cap. Go hand him the phone. Take. Up there and had him the phone. What the hell are you look, calling I'm trying, me for? I'm trying to see what else they going to do. That's what I'm trying to do. Thing. You done seen enough. All that porn that be over there doing, putting out a guy. What you want? Wait to see him. Take care of over there. Hand him the phone. That's no that Jason ain't in no park for no I'm got my at home. I am on our third child pregnant with a baby. But I don't give a I'll go up there and whoop his while I'm pregnant. I know well Jason ain't in no park for no Go hand him the phone. Look, I want to see. Oh, let me, let me, hold on, let me step out the truck. Hold on. They drinking wine right now. I, I don't give a f- about that. Go hand him the phone. Walk over there and hand him the phone. I don't okay, know what okay. you do with yours. I don't play about mine. Oh, man, they just. Mark, Mark, Mark. I don't know who you are, but go hand him the phone. Go hand him the phone. You sitting up there watching with your weak. Who in the f- are you anyway? Um, I, I, That's my wife he with. He with my wife. You must be old. Because if you was one of them big old yoked up black <laughs> one of them got on this, <laughs> who does that? You've been watching them at the <laughs> park. I'm telling you, now I'm whooping that <laughs> when I see her. I'm whooping your wife. <laughs> then I'm whooping Jason. <laughs> then I'm a <laughs> slap your <laughs> calling me with this. <laughs> you should up there calling me, got my <laughs> blood pressure. Scar high while you should up there watching my <laughs> husband, with your <laughs> wife. you supposed to be all on top of that. Okay. Yeah, when I see you got that coming too. But I'm going I'm, to I'm find this Langley Park right now. I'm going to get off the phone because I'll be up there. I'm going to show you. How? Okay, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Somebody want to talk to you. Give us a phone. Hello? Hello, who is this? This Tommy. Tommy who? This nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your husband Jason got me to prank phone call you. <laughs> this is some <laughs> You almost made me have my baby here from this house this morning. <laughs> and I got two more months to go. Your husband Jason got me to prank phone call you. <laughs> He's no better than that shit. I'm whooping his <laughs> anyway when he come on. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, he told me, he said, look, man, my wife is a no-nonsense. She ain't, she don't take no drama. None of that. He told that don't me. That no sense because I was like, what man sit there and watch their wife at the park? <laughs> what what man does that? This is crazy. But you tell him, I got him. I got him. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hey, I got to ask you this, baby. One more thing. What is the baddest radio show in the land? The Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get Jason with this. No, Tommy, I'm going to get you. I'll show you what I'm going to do. Yeah, I'm just going to name the baby Tommy. Tell him that for a joke. Tell him you're going to name the baby Tommy? Yeah, tell, tell, tell Jason that I'm going to name the baby Tommy. <laughs> I'm through with it, Shirley. I ain't got to say nothing else about it. Uh, you need to be. Uh, <laughs> coming, up next, it is ask, coming up next, it is Ask the CRTLO Chief Ready to Love Officer Nephew Tommy right after this. That's crit low. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, Jussie Smollett. Uh, is back in the news. He still well, he says he is the victim. He is still saying he's the victim. Uh, we'll hear from him a little later. What? Lawrence Fishburne. Lawrence Fishburne is in the news. 60 years old now. He says he's single and ready to mingle, lady. Wow. And uh, we hope President Biden is more careful if he goes bike riding this weekend. Uh, but right now, it is time to ask. He needs to stay uh, yeah, off the yeah. bike. Well, we know what happened. Yeah, well, we know what happened last weekend, right? It's time okay. to get a scooter. It's time uh-huh. to get a scooter. <laughs> right now, it is time to ask the CRTLO, that is the Chief Ready to Love Officer, and the JLO, the JLO, 
that is yeah. the junior I love like officer. That. So yeah. that's nephew Tommy and Junior. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna, you ain't gonna like none of my answers. I know that. Yeah, ready for your love <laughs> question. Here we go. This one's from Low in Annapolis. Low writes, I'm at I, I'm at my wit's end with my boyfriend. He has a cheating spirit on him. He texts women, DMs them, and uh, goes to dinner with his female friends. He says he never crosses the line with them and he sees nothing wrong with what he's doing. If he's really not cheating, why does he entertain all of these women? Why? Because that's what that's in his spirit, baby. <laughs> that's what he has to do. I mean, what 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 do you want? As long as he's entertaining you, as long as you get to go out when you want to go out, why why are you worried? Why are you concerned? This has nothing to do with you. He has that kind of spirit. He loves everybody. He loves you. He loves them. He loves what he does. Why are you over here concerned about how he go out and what he do? As long as he's yeah. loving you, why are you worried about anybody else? See, that, that, see, that's the problem. You worry about everything else, not worried about yourself. As long as you getting love, why are you worried about love that's going true. other places? That see, that's so my true. problem. Did you, go, go ahead, Junior. What? It, it, it no, what? no, that is you... so true. That is so true. Thank Why you. is you concerned about where he going, <laughs> who he out with? Let me tell you something. The Bible says, love everybody like I have loved you. That's what he's doing. That's he what, is that's on what it. Doing. He that's is what he on doing. it. He did not put the Bible Love thy there. neighbor like I have loved you. That's what he's doing. Uh -huh. These are right. people that's neighbors. They cross the street from him. It's people uh -huh. he knows his friends on social media. He go in DMs. He checks to see if they want to meet up for some more love. This uh -huh. man, the question is, why are you still calling him your boyfriend? Why don't yeah, you get you some not. people to love? Go, you go out yeah. and love some people. Everybody, Everybody love who boyfriend. love you. He's, she's, she's not ready to love. Under these, <laughs> under these conditions, clearly. <laughs> Sorry, Lo. Uh, we're moving on to Jamelia in uh, Cordova. Jamelia says, my mother slept with my boyfriend last year. I was asleep, and she seduced him after he had been drinking all day. He confessed, and we worked through it. My mother is mad at me because I forgave him, but not her. Do I owe her forgiveness? Mm. Let your mama have that. Come on, man. <laughs> Your mama has done so much for you over the years. And you're going to let one night, one night of sleeping with the man do this to y'all? Let your mama have that. Give back sometime. It's nepotism. Sometimes you got to let your mama have a little something. You know what I mean? Mama going through some things. Mama done paved the way for you to be where you are today. And you're going to let one little night of loving. One little night of love and come between y'all. Let your mama have that. Let her have that. It's your mama. mama. Mamas need love too, don't they? Yeah. Jesus, Junior, man. You, you know what? How how disrespectful can you be to how? not let your mama have what what, what she getting? Look, well, look, this this ain't nothing but hate right here. But I, I, I can't. Constant I can't. Hate. When, when you don't let your mama have what she need to have, that bothers me. It because it really it's your mama, that I, right? That's your mama. Your mama. Uh -huh. That's your mama. Your mama didn't What marched. you got? What yeah. you got, Go Junior? The, 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 the question on my mind is, how fine is your mama, boy? I tell you right now, <laughs> that's what we need to know. Okay, your mama out here doing everybody. Your boyfriend too. She got. Uh -huh. She got to be fine. Did you still? I mean, you didn't even disown her. You called her here with a title, your mama. <laughs> Set with your boyfriend. Your mama got to be fine. I know you got a Jada fact. Pickett mama. Man. man. You got, you got yeah. a Jada Pickett mama. How can that, <laughs> the man didn't know it was your mom. Y'all look alike. Come on, uh, man. They're not twins. You, yeah. You heard the song, Shirley, Carla. What? She get it from her mama. What did you uh, think the boy was going to do? No. Man. You all are really helping yes. these women today. But Thank you. Thank you. For fine, that. Fine. Fella, ain't nobody finna be up in here trying to really be matchmaking and love and connecting people. What, what, you, what you want? You want Steve? That's what you want? What all you right, want? All right, then we're moving on. We're moving on to Glenda and Go Hoover. Ahead, Wait. Glenda, Glenda writes, I'm 75 years old and my boyfriend is 77. His fantasy was to have sex in the back of his car, so we did it. He has a driver, and the driver waited outside. He sent his driver to pick me up yesterday, and it was awkward riding with him alone. Uh, do you think the driver thinks I'm slutty because of what we did? <laughs> Look, Miss Daisy, let me tell you something, baby. Uh, 
You get it like you get it. You get it how you get it, baby. I don't, first of all, I don't know how y'all old ass was in the back of the car folded up trying to get it anyway. What kind of car y'all got that y'all can get back there? And, this had to be a camper. This was not a car. This had to be a Winnebago. Ain't no way in the world y'all got y'all old decrepit behinds back there. But you know what? To each his own, baby. If y'all can get back there and make it happen, make mm -hmm. it happen. Matter of fact, let me tell you something. Quit worrying yeah. about the driver. Do the driver. What? What? Why y'all looking at me like that on Zoom? Do the driver. Do the now driver. the driver ain't looking at you crazy. Do the driver. Now he not looking at you crazy. See, you got to listen. You really want to put that a, out there? <laughs> okay. There's a way to take out the person that's looking at you crazy. Just do the driver. Just do it. What's wrong with that? Have okay, sex junior. with the driver. Now ain't nobody looking at you crazy. Handle your problems, babe. Yeah, I don't really think the driver want any of that. I don't think the driver want none of that. I think the driver thinking about it. I need new clients is what I need. That's why I'm standing out here outside this car while, while my grandmother and grandfather just, yes. I don't think he really want to be Nana part of that. Yeah, mama and papa. And, you know, and like you said, Tommy, I don't know if they in no car, but they in something that they in probably a camp or That's something That's a station like that. wagon, yeah, dude, station with the paneling on the no side. Car. But I know the driver don't want it, man. And, man, he, he can't wait for you to get out the car so he can tell somebody what he All just right. saw. That's what's mm -hmm. wrong with the driver. All right, we're mm. going to try and get to this one quickly if we can. Miko in Pasadena says, I'm recently divorced and I'm having trouble dating. My friends think I'm too forward when I meet men because I don't want to waste my time on losers. So I asked to see it or rub on it on a first date to yes. see what he's working with. What's so bad about that? Is it offensive to all men or just the little ones? Mm. No, baby. Rub it. Rub it. You you know what? Rub it and make three wishes. That's what you're supposed to do. Rub it and make three wishes. What? It's a genie thing, ain't it? I mean, uh, what? Uh, <laughs> what? Rub it, make three wishes, and look, and hopefully it'll be what you want at the end of the three wishes. You want Lord, you want what? What you what you what you wishing for? Wish. You you can wish if you want to wish. This ignorance show wish. right here. <laughs> All right, coming up. Thank you, guys. Coming up, coming up at the top of the hour, we'll have some entertainment news for you right after this. I, I wish it never stopped. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Jesse Smollett recently opened up on the Sway in the Morning show about the public ridicule he has experienced over the last three years. Back in 2020, uh, Smollett pled not guilty to allegations that he staged a homophobic, hom homophobic racist attack on himself and then reported it to police and accused MAGA supporters of the crime. Authorities allege that Smollett staged the attack to further his career. Well, he denied it and maintains that he is the victim. Take a listen. Didn't need to have a some sort of rise in his career. I was on the up and up. I was coming from New York, from doing a table read for my dream role in a Broadway show. I had just optioned the rights to the autobiography, the authorized autobiography of Alvin Ailey. I had oh. just, all of these things that I was <clears throat> creating, there would be no reason for me to do some dumb, corny <laughs> like that. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. But people are going to believe what they believe. And what I have to do is I have to keep working. But you're not working now, though. <laughs> but but what, yeah, what is, people going to believe what we believe. We Right. The truth. I mean, I had, a, I had a subway yesterday, and I thought about him. I mean, you, you <laughs> did what you did, dog. Right, right. When I, when I had to, every bite of my subway, I thought about mm -hmm. you. And I thought about, I, there's no way I could eat this at 3 o'clock in the morning with these two African people hanging me. You did this, and you know you did this. So we're going to quit all this, and now, now you're going to bring Alvin Ailey, you're going to bring Roots in this now? That's what you're doing? No. no. And, and, That's uh, Alex uh, the, the dancer. Yeah, the oh. dancer, the choreographer. Oh, he, yeah. oh, he wasn't talking about... It. Oh, who are we talking about? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, talking about... Who are we talking about? Alvin uh, Ailey. I don't know. Alvin, Alvin Ailey, the only black dance oh. company that's been around Oh, he around was dancing for with Roots. What was he doing? He was dancing <laughs> with Roots? <laughs> he don't know what he doing. Tommy, <laughs> there is no Roots. That's Alex <laughs> Haley who wrote the book Roots. There's right, so that, that... Let's leave oh, Alex it Haley. It, all so, the way out. Okay. So Kuta Kinte ain't had nothing to do with this. No. <laughs> right. Okay. 
But hey, but hey though, it was it was two Africans in there. You right, it was two Africans in there. So we back, I, Junior. We Junior. might be at roots in this show. And so, so, so yeah. it wasn't. It was Chicken not the George underground. It was not the underground subway. Is that what you're saying? No, no, no. It could have been. Okay, though. I thought oh it was the God. underground subway. I thought he he was trying to steal away home. He wasn't trying to steal away. No, I'm sorry. Jesse oh. was on Sway in the morning to promote his first project since being released from jail. You said he needs to keep working. This is what he's doing now. He directed the movie B-Boy Blues. It is streaming right now on BET+. Plus. Okay? So Are they eating answer. subways in this show? <laughs> Is what I mean. We're moving hey, on. Okay, hey, we are moving on. We'd like to be at Crash uh, Services and look over there. <laughs> Get them Subway sandwiches out of here. <laughs> I'm hanging everybody in here. I promise In other yeah. news, uh, actor Lawrence Fishburne, great actor, we love him, says he is single and ready to mingle now. Uh, Fishburne and his second wife divorced back in 2018, and despite two failed marriages, uh, Fishburne said he is ready to put himself back out there. He is 60 years old. Page Six reporters caught up with him at the Tribeca Film Festival, and when asked about his love life, love life uh, Lawrence Fishburne said, eventually, I would like to date, but there is nobody in particular on my radar. All right. I like that answer. That was a pretty smooth answer. The article noted that he is not on social media, so it might be a little harder for him to meet someone. That's the thing. All right. So Tommy. Zaddy. Uh-huh, Zaddy. Uh-huh, Lawrence uh-huh, Fishburne. Uh-huh. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Love him. Uh-huh. Such a talented uh, So the hoodlum, uh, the hoodlum can't find nobody right now. Is that what you're saying? Well, I think people remember that he played Ike. I think that's what his problem is. He played Ike Turner in What's Love Got to Do With It. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Yeah. Um, But because he was so good, he convinced us that he was Ike. But Tommy, this is something for you. Think about this. Maybe you could talk to Will Packer and the producers of Ready to Love because people ask about this all the time. And put Ike Turner on now? (laughs) <laughs> like a ready to love for celebrities or seniors, ooh, you know. Ooh. Celebrities. Okay, would be okay, good. wait, 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 uh-huh. wait, wait. I like this. I like this. Uh-huh. So we got we got fish. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh-huh. Eat the cake, Danny throw- May. We got. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. We, 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 we right play, right, right, right time. I, I, I need you saying them song. Well, okay, we get, I'm in we your get. Head, I- Ann. I'm in your head. I'm in here, Ann. I'm in here. I'm in here. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. I just want my name. I just want my name. So yeah, you you never know. Think okay, about we do that. him. We do Anthony Anderson. Anthony's just recently divorced. Oh we yeah, put that's Anthony right. In there. Yeah. Okay. And he plays his dad on Blackish. Uh-huh. Right. So, so right. you and your you and your daddy <laughs> looking for love. Okay. Okay. <laughs> who, who, oh, who else? Uh, 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 Sherry oh, Shepard. We could throw her in. There. Oh yeah, yeah, oh. Sherry. Yeah, she. Yeah, she's kind of busy right now. She's doing her new, you know, getting ready for. But she's looking for love. She looking for love. She's still looking for love. Kim Whitley. Kim. Kim. I could put Kim uh-huh. in there. Kim Whitley mm-hmm. in there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. Who else? Wow. Uh, Taraji. Taraji broke up with Taraji. that dude with the, with the ball player. Taraji. We throw Taraji in there. Oh, okay. We finna do ready to Taraji love celebrities. Who else we looking for? Cookie Lion. I'm ready, uh, baby. Come on, Cookie. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, cookie, cookie looking for something. Cookie, cookie. What need, about cookie need, um, cookie, Aaron Cookies need love too. Cookie need love. Okay. So, let me see. Is he still married? Show. Or they gonna, gonna stand there? Terrence say if he get on the show. Say man, I'm telling you right now, man. I just want to know. I'm ready to love. Come on, Lucius. All that for the show. That's what you're going to do, El Boogie. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, we have, this is a potential show, Tommy. So, you know, you need it. to take this Ooh. back. Yeah. And we, if we throw a Kardashian, any Kardashian in there, we good. Just, it don't. Chloe. Whoever Chloe. ain't got nobody. Chloe. Chloe. Who, whoever ain't got Chloe. nobody right now. Chloe. Just throw a Kardashian. <laughs> That mess a whole house up right there, Carl. A Kardashian. Just throw that in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Think about it. Coming up in 20 minutes after the hour, how much of your personal life, specifically your relationship, do you share on social media? That's the question. We'll be right back to answer it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Of course, the breakup with Lori Harvey and Michael B. Jordan shocked everyone. We know that. But now Michael B. Jordan is trending because he's removed all of the pictures of Lori and him from his Instagram. So, I mean, people do that. But, you know, they do that a lot when they break up with someone. They they erase all traces. So here's the question. Do you guys think that's petty 
Or would you do the same thing once you break up with someone? Would you, you know, just erase all the pay, uh, the uh, pictures? You ain't, <laughs> you ain't got to break up. Listen, when Jackie get on my nerves, I take I take Jackie pictures off my stuff. As soon as Jackie get on my nerves, I take all her pictures down. Your wife. These, yes, my wife. When we hanging out and look good and we look like we having a good time, when wow. you done got on my nerves, why, why would I leave you up there and you done got on my nerves? <laughs> Why would, why would I continue to make it look like we all that today? We ain't all that today. I'm taking your ass. Your wife what? for over when you, 20 when you, years. Uh, 21 years married as of June 16th. Yes, bring your ass down. Because <laughs> as of today, I'm not feeling you. So now, oh, I, you, you is, you is mm. what? You off my TikTok? You off my Instagram? <laughs> You, matter of fact, you off my MySpace. You off everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you think, do you think couples, especially celebrities, should keep their relationships more private? Junior, what about you? Because you always tell us everything that's going on in your life. Yeah, but I don't post it on Instagram. I mean, I don't really have much going on. You, I have to talk about these crazy women. I, mean, I have to, because I can't believe I'm meeting. You would think that. You would think that if I'm on this morning show, I would meet quality more women. Some of these things, I mean, I'd be like, you know what? You could have told me you had an ex-boyfriend live with you. I, I don't need to know that. Not live together. Yeah, I need to know that. Walking in here, I'm putting my keys down. He right there. And you're supposed to tell me. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Carla. Now, the, now the people now, that Carla. we won't call her, call wait, the people that wait. we really want to take down, I'm, I'm, I got to say it, Carla. What? What? I've been to say it. I got to get it off my chest. The people Go that we ahead. really want to take, Jada and Will, take it all down. We are tired of y'all. <laughs> what, what? Why I can't say it? We tired of y'all. We tired. <laughs> I can't take no more of y'all. You, you just, I hate waking up every morning. Now we at the red table, the black table, the white table. But stop. I'm tired of y'all. <laughs> I'm tired of you, sitting at the table with you. That's one couple you felt has overshared their relationship. It's just, it's, that, that honestly has just been way too much, man. All right. Here's one last one. Now, when couples break up, we want to know why. Do you think they should tell us why they break up? Or it, it, well, do we care? Do we really care? We shouldn't even have to know why. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't even know. How. We should look out. up six months. Oh, y'all broke up. We, know, we didn't even know that. It right. should be that. Exactly. All right. Thank you, guys. Coming up in 34 minutes after the hour, former Democratic nominee for governor of Florida has been indicted on wire fraud charges. We'll talk about that right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You guys remember the former Democratic nominee for governor of Florida, Andrew Gillum? Well, Andrew Gillum, remember him, right? Andrew Gillum Wasn't he has caught been in indicted. a hotel or something? With, with yeah, some... yeah, that's the, yes. yeah, the and very he's married. guy. Yes, yes. Uh huh. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, he was indicted in a criminal case stemming from his time as Tallahassee mayor and gubernatorial candidate. According to the indictment, Gillum and his associates solicited campaign contributions from undercover agents, and in exchange, the agents were promised unencumbered government contracts. All right. Gillum was also charged with making false statements to the FBI, and his first court appearance was on Wednesday afternoon. The 21 count indictment against Gillum shows that a grand jury filed the charges against him on June 7th. Also charged was Sharon Letman Hicks, a longtime confidant of Gillum's. In a statement, Andrew Gillum said he ran his political campaigns with integrity. What? <laughs> That's what Sharon said. No, that's what Gillum said. He ran his political campaigns with integrity. Make no mistake that this case is not legal. It is political, he said. Uh, there's been a target on my back ever since I was the mayor of Tallahassee. They found nothing then, and I have full confidence that my legal team will prove my innocence now. Now, you may remember back in 2020, Gillum faced a few personal struggles. Miami police found him in a Miami South Beach hotel room with another man that had possibly overdosed on drugs. Shortly after that, Gillum entered a rehab facility for alcoholism. He later came out as bisexual in an interview he did with his wife. All right. So that's why he's saying this is it's political and not legal. Um, we'll just have to watch this story. Wow. And because 
see what happens, see, you know, because he was a very promising gubernatorial candidate for Florida. What do you, you see recall. promising about this right here? What is promising? <laughs> what, 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 what is, we got to keep watching? We didn't what know we what he's keep watching this story right here. You, we, <laughs> we, you, you don't see the ending? You ever watch a movie and see the ending already? <laughs> we you didn't know what ending? was going on. <laughs> when you, didn't know, you, you knew when you went in that room, you knew what was going on. What did you mean? What, what, you, what, what is promising? Let's see what happens. So what is he going to run still, for now? What is he going to run for now? Run he for still now. has to have a trial in the court of law. He's still innocent until proven guilty. All of right. that. So you we, don't see what. guilty? You didn't see that once he put that once he put that key card in that door. You didn't see guilty? <laughs> He's not on trial for that. He didn't get arrested yes, that's, for that. That's, that's not what okay. saying. It's political, not legal. That's it why just, you're saying that. Yeah. That was the Okay, so he so okay, hold on. Let's back up. Y'all say he was, they was drinking in the room? <laughs> this is what not what the, the story room. is about. Yeah. This I is current charges. The, the That's story is about he's drinking now <laughs> while they are, and, and he's giving, he got no. to quit talking while he drank it. Because that's what's going on. <laughs> no, no. I just think that Gillian and Smully need him. to go sit their ass down. Black people trying to make a move here. We trying to get ahead, and here y'all come. Every right. five minutes, we trying to get ahead. Now we got to cover your story. Uh-huh. What about the Man. midterm elections we got going on? We got like real issues junior. out here. Yeah, you come. Yes. Yes. Well, maybe he Why should I'm do this, this Roots movie. Maybe he should do that. With, <laughs> he's, um, he, who, he's not an actor. It? He's a politician. <laughs> And all the best the best actors are politicians. What is you talking about? <laughs> I think you know now, before you with the right. scandal, he made poor choices. He admitted to oh, that. Absolutely. So now with this situation, you know, just like Shirley said, you're innocent <sighs> until proven guilty, but this doesn't look good mm. either. It's like uh-huh. what in the world That's is true. going on? What yeah. is going on? You know on? what? What? If him and Justin go sit at that table talk, we'll get a lot of understanding <laughs> of what's going on. <laughs> That's a lot. Uh, at red I give table. Up. I give up. At the uh-huh. red. Well, Carla, now this one you ought to get somebody ought to slap the hell out of you. Now this is right here or really deserves being slapped. I'm just saying. What? Come no. on. Yeah. You, oh, what? like a, the Oscar slap? I mean, what does slapping have yeah, to do like, with like that? Yeah, like Will should slap these kind of people. You oh, see what I'm saying? Oh, okay. And not Chris oh, Rock. Okay. He's <laughs> just trying to do his job and entertain us on Oscar night. You don't I see got this? you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, so coming then. up next, <laughs> it is the nephew and the prank phone call for today, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at about four minutes after the hour, it's my strawberry letter for today. And the subject is, should I cancel the party or cancel my girlfriend? We'll get into that in just a bit. Right now, it is time for the nephew and the prank phone call. What you got for us, Nep? What you got? Shirley, this right here is, uh, Mm. I left my ring. I left my ring. I left my ring. (laughs) All right, let's go, cat dog. I left my ring. Hello. Hello, I'm trying to reach a uh, Mr. Mr. or Mrs. please. This is Mrs. Hi, my name is Dr. I'm actually trying to reach uh, your husband, Clarence. Is he is he available? I have to check. Is there a reason you're calling? Uh, well, I'm actually the uh, the surgeon that actually did the procedure on removing his gallstone. Yes. Yeah. How's he doing? Is there any complications thus far? Well, no complication according to the doctor. Okay. Yes. Well, listen, uh, there's a couple little bit of things I want to discuss with you guys and, and see if we can maybe get them rectified. Is, is, is he around? Yes, he's around. Uh, oh, oh. May okay. I ask what is this in reference to? Actually, Miss actually, when we actually did the procedure on your on your husband and removing the gallstones, yes. I will say that there was a bit of a mistake made, and I'm hoping that he can come back in so we can kind of get it rectified. You know, it, it'll be actually 30 minutes, and he'll be in and out. But actually, when I removed the gallstones, uh, and I, I'm very embarrassed to say this, I actually left my wedding ring inside your husband's. You what? Uh, okay, and I, I understand, ma'am. Would you say that again? I say I actually left my wedding ring inside your husband when I actually removed the gallstones. And I'm hoping that he'll go- come back in so I can actually take it out, and, and, and he'll be on his way. Ooh. He's not gonna like this. Hold on, let me see. Can I get him? Claire! What? Do you know a surgeon is on the phone? Surgeon? Yeah, he's on the phone and he's saying he left something in you. He left something in me? In you and he need to go back and get it. Hello? 
Hello. Hello. Hello, Mr. Yeah. Hi, how you doing? This is Dr. I actually did the surgery on you when you were um, came in and got your gallstones removed. I, I remember you, Dr. I, I will say this, Mr. Clarence. I, I actually made a bit of a mistake when you were here, and, and my apology. I, if I can actually get you to come back in, man, I, I can get you taken care of. But And uh, this is just a big mistake on my part. But when you guys came in and I removed your stones, I actually left my wedding ring inside. Inside of me? Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Your wedding ring? That, sir, I, I, I know this is crazy, but, yes, I, I, I have truly made a mistake and want to see if I can get this thing rectified and get this thing taken out. And, and I tell you, man, I've, I've been without my ring, and, and my wife is, is raising holy hell about it. Yeah. But you know something, Dr. We got a problem. What, what, what do you mean? I mean, I'm about to go back to work. I, I really can't be going back into the uh, operating room for somebody to take a ring out of me that they left, that they left by mistake. You know what I'm saying? No. Okay. I, uh, I mean, you know, uh, I realize your wife might be upset and you need your ring, but at this point, that ring's going to have to stay where it is for a while. Sir, I, I, I can't, I honestly can't allow for that ring to, to stay there another two or three days. I, I don't think you understand exactly what I'm going through. There's no way I can allow that. Well, that. You gotta go back to work. Yeah, I got to go back to work. But you know something? I mean, you know, I mean, you know, we're talking about a bad, bad, serious problem. You know, we're talking about malpractice. I mean, you know, we're talking about me taking off more time from work when I'm ready to go back. I mean, you know, we're talking lawsuit, all kind of stuff here. We need to get together. Can you hear me, Doc? No, no I, yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah, I, right I, now. He needs to come over here now. Uh-oh. Okay, my wife's a little upset too. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, you know, I, 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 I can't get back on an operating table. Sir, this won't take but seconds to actually for me to snip that thing and get that ring out of there. It won't take but a minute. I mean, you still have the same incisions there. I can go right back into where the same scar was <laughs> and take that out and keep it moving. Go back into the same incision. You're gonna operate again if you cut me open. Sir, I, I, I promise you, you won't even know I was there. I'll go in there and take that ring out just that quickly. Yeah. Okay, but, <laughs> but uh, let me ask you this here, my wife, my wife. Is about to go crazy. I'm, I'm pretty. I'm a pretty good guy here, but I mean, you know, you got you left a ring in me. I mean, you know, do you all have malpractice insurance or something? Sir, we have plenty of insurance. You know, it's it, it's really more about what I'm going through at home. So I'm doing this for you. Uh, yeah, pretty much here at this point. I mean, no one actually from the hospital actually knows that I'm actually calling you. Wow. You know, I mean, that's a big, big problem. You said something about malpractice. No, I didn't say anything about malpractice. You guys actually said that. I didn't say anything. Okay. Now, let me. I, my, oh, my. I said it's malpractice. Okay. Hold on now, Doris. Hold on. Uh, well, now, let me ask you this here. Every time I've heard of somebody leaving something inside of somebody, you know, it usually ends up being a situation where it sets up infections and stuff. Well, that's, that's 18 karat gold. That's not going to infect you at all. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, but good grief. I mean, I I just, I mean, I didn't even want to do the first surgery, but I didn't have any choice. You know what, Mr. I, I'll be honest with you. I've tried to talk to you and be patient with you. If i got to come over and put some chloroform up against your nose and knock you out in order to perform this procedure to get my ring, then damn it, that's what i got to do. Oh, whoa, whoa, hold on now, Doc. What I'm supposed to be doing while you're doing that. Did you hear that? Did you hear what he said? Yeah, just let him come on over. i got something for you. Come on. You know I'm not going to stand for these threats, Doc. You know, that's your problem with your ring. Now, you know, up until now, everything was cool. Now you got a big problem. I tell you, it is here. I'm at home right now. You're at home with my ring. You got my ring. You can come get it right now. Get out of here, now. Okay. Now, I don't, I don't have a problem coming right over there to get my ring because I, want, I need my ring back. Let's do it. Come on over. And I'll be waiting for you, too. You out of your mind? We got something for you, Doc. Hey, listen, I don't care what the both of you are doing. The bottom line is that you have my ring. I got your ring. You just told me I had it, didn't you? It's inside of me. Where it's going to stay. Sir, I'm not going to continue to go back and forth with you. You're not going to continue to do anything because you come over here, I'm going to take you out. You've already threatened to come over here and put chloroform to my nose, knocking me out to go in the side of my body. You come over here, Doc, you got problems. Now, tell you what. I don't want any problems out of your wife or out of you, you about a simple you procedure right that's only going to take 30 minutes that. and everybody will be happy after that. You won't make it back home. Caprando? I understand everything you say. I got one more thing I need to say to the both of you all. Are you listening to me? I'm listening. Is, is Doris listening? No, not really, because I've already tuned you out. Well, here's the last thing I need to say to you. This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Y'all just got pranked by y'all niece, Peaches. What? Nephew Tommy. Nephew Tommy, is that you? This is me, man. 
nephew. Did you hear that, nephew Thomas? Hey, nephew Thomas. Yeah. I still got your ring. You got my ring. I'm an old man. You're messing with my heart, talking about going back inside of my body. <laughs> all right, let me let me let me speak to Miss Dar. Yes. Miss Dar, you all right? Yes, I'm fine. <laughs> Hey, Ms. Dodd, I got one more thing to ask. Uh -huh. What is the baddest radio show in the land? The Steve Harvey Morning Show <laughs> with Matthew Tuck. <laughs> <laughs> I love Miss Doris. Doris. I love Miss Doris. Doris and Claire. <laughs> She's so cute. Oh my God. We play too much. Playing. We just want to get my ring back. I Got just want to get my ring. ring. They was tag teaming you, Tommy. Yes. <laughs> oh, come on over here. I got some for you. I got some for you. He got to go to work. I got to go to work. <laughs> But then he say, "Hold on, Doris. Hold on." Yeah. Oh, no. yeah. 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 Now, my wife, my wife, not hearing this, man. She's not, she's not going along. <laughs> what a cute couple. I got Hey, if you're in New Orleans, Louisiana, I am on my way. The N.O. baby is going down. It's the Thomas Miles weekend. It's the Thomas Miles experience weekend. You don't want to miss it. Miles of Giving, my foundation. When we get back to Wounded Warriors, go to milesofgiving.org and you can see everything. But you don't want to miss the white party fun tonight. Okay. Guess what, Carla? At the Zulu Club, baby, it's the yeah, white party, right. and yeah, it's going down. Yeah, all right, yeah. all right. Zulus, Zulus. I want to say, I want to say thank you to the Zulus. I appreciate y'all supporting me. All right, right. thank you, nephew. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Coming awesome. up next, strawberry letter <laughs> subject: Should I cancel the party or cancel my girlfriend? We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this Jay's not one. here. You don't have to pop your paper. <laughs> I like to keep in practice. <laughs> Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, the Strawberry Letter. Thank you, nephew. Should I cancel the party or cancel my girlfriend? Dear Steve and Shirley, I've been with my girlfriend for 10 years and we're having our first major issue. When I met my girlfriend, she was new in town, so I introduced her to my group of friends and their wives. There are four couples that hang out and we've all known each other since college. The wives were all nice enough to my girlfriend, but they've never included her in girls' night out or invited her to brunch with them. Whenever we're all together, I make sure my girlfriend feels included, but now there's a problem that I need to deal with. My girlfriend thinks that my best friend's wife flirts with me. I will admit that my best friend's wife gets a bit out of hand when she's had too much wine, but her husband is always around and he thinks it's funny. My girlfriend says, as a woman, she sees things differently than I do. Uh, last weekend, we all met at the park for a friend's birthday, and we got on the subject of race and politics. My best friend's wife sat by me, and we talked and agreed on most of the issues. My girlfriend was giving me the evil eye the whole time, and I was very uncomfortable. When we left, my girlfriend was furious. So... It's our turn to host the annual 4th of July celebration at our house. And my girlfriend said, my best friend's wife is not invited, but her husband can come. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> How can I get my girlfriend to realize that she might be the problem? I love her, but I am sick of constantly validating her feelings. Should I cancel the 4th of July get together or should I cancel my girlfriend? Please advise. Are you serious right now? Uh, you you would cancel your girlfriend of 10 years over this? I mean, I, I just got to say to that, well, 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 aren't you, aren't you shallow, sir? Uh, aren't you drawing a line in the sand and picking sides here? And all because you're a little uncomfortable right now? I mean, imagine how your girl feels. Uh, now, mind you, I think she's dead wrong. 
No, I'm going to say this. She's just less than tactful for not inviting Miss Flirty Pants to your party, but her husband can come. Okay, that's awkward for everyone. I, I get that. Awkward for everyone involved. But that's what old girl gets for being so disrespectful to your girlfriend. She's putting her foot down. I think you, on the other hand, should should be standing by her. You should be supporting your girlfriend and not taking their side or anyone else's side who comes up against her. You guys have been together for 10 years. You should should have said something a long time ago when they never included her socially. You knew all about it and said or did nothing. These are your friends. She was new in town. You introduced her to your group of friends and they snub your girl when they have girls night out, when they have brunches and things like that. And and this woman openly flirts with you in your face, in her face. And all you do is eat it up and blame your girl. Why? I'll tell you why. I know why. Because you like it. You like the attention she's giving you. And the fact that her husband is there and does nothing, thinks it's funny. That makes it all okay, doesn't it? Meanwhile, your girlfriend is feeling some kind of way. And she's letting you know. And okay, this is a side note here. Why is it that men always pretend they don't know when a woman is checking for them. You guys never know this. She was who? When? <laughs> what they uh-uh. do, Shirley? Yeah. She <laughs> was who? When? Uh-uh, no, girl. You tripping. You crazy. She, uh-uh. Oh, come on. Knock it off, guys. You know what's up. And so do we. Okay, so do we. That's what she's telling you. She feels differently about it because she's a woman. So I say to you, sir, if you are considering dumping your 10-year girlfriend over this stupid mess, she's probably better off without you. This is over a party, and come on. She's giving you 10 years more than you deserve. That's what I say. Steve? We have a difference of opinion here. (laughs) So we might as well get started. Let's just start with the subject of the letter. Should I cancel the party or cancel my girlfriend? How is that a question? Now, Shirley says, after she's been with you 10 years, well, that's why we have a problem right here. Mm -hmm. If you've been the girlfriend after college for 10 years, has it occurred to you that he don't want you? for no more than he already getting from you? If you've been with a man after college for 10 years and he ain't asked you to marry him yet, something wrong. So let's just start there. Now let's go on down the line. You got this uh, best friend. Now, first, oh, here's the next part. Mm-hmm. You introduce her to a group of friends and for 10 years they don't ask her to go to the happy hour, <laughs> shopping, Bridge. to the movie, to brunch they don't like her (laughs) they do not like your girlfriend it's something about her that they've all picked up on and detected and they've decided as a group that they don't like her that's why you ain't married her because you done detected some things too now this letter is just the last straw now when she gets a little bit to drink you'll admit she's a bit much. And she be saying some wild stuff. And your but your boy be right there, your best friend, and he think it's funny. What dude thinks it's funny that his girl is hitting on another dude because she drunk? (laughs) Ha ha, hi, he, he, hell. (laughs) Right. Who finds that funny? There's something wrong with this whole little group here. Mm Hold that thought. We'll have part two of your response coming up at 23 minutes after the hour. Today's Strawberry Letter title, Should I Cancel the Party or Cancel My Girlfriend? We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Come on, Steve. Let's recap today's Strawberry Letter. Should I cancel the party or cancel my girlfriend? That's that's a crazy question. It is. This is just your turn to do a 4th of July. And you're considering canceling, not canceling that, but canceling your girlfriend who's been your girlfriend from 10 years, who you don't really want no more than for what she is anyway. You don't protect her like you want her to be your wife. 10 years, don't nobody like her. She don't go to brunch, happy hour, they don't invite her out. 10 years. And then when y'all all all together, you always make sure when y'all together, 
that my girlfriend feels included. You forcing her into the bunch. <laughs> but now there's a problem. My girlfriend thinks that my best friend wife flirts with me, and I will admit when she gets a bit out of hand when she's had too much wine, and her husband always around and he thinks it's funny. I, I don't understand that right there. How that's funny every damn time. <laughs> she get drunk. I want to chew. <laughs> that, that, that ain't funny. <laughs> but like Shirley said, you kind of enjoy that. <laughs> so you put up with it. I bet if it wasn't your best friend's girl, I bet it'd be something to this. Mm. 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 Uh-huh. Now, the fact that your girlfriend has noticed this, women do see things that men don't see. And Shirley said, why y'all always act like y'all don't see it? Because we don't. <laughs> we actually oh. don't. <laughs> hey, let me Man. tell you something. If we did, we'd act on it. <laughs> we don't see it. But since you pointed it out, we looking for it. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So you want some of this big daddy. All right now. Yeah. (laughs) What's up with you? See, that's what it turned into. Well, here's the deal. Uh, Last weekend, we all met at the park for my friend's birthday. We got on the subject of race and politics. Then your best friend's wife sat by me and we talked and agreed to most issues. My girlfriend was giving you the evil eye the whole time. And I was very uncomfortable. You should have moved. Got your ass up off that park bench and went <laughs> sat on the other side. You saw her looking at you. Mm. Your stupid ass, you going to stay there. <laughs> he likes it. That's why your ass was uncomfortable. You saw her looking upside your head, talking to this drunk heifer. <laughs> then when we left, your girlfriend was furious. Mm. So now it's y'all's time to host, host the 4th of July celebration at y'all house. And my girlfriend said, your best friend wife is not invited, but her husband can come. What the hell? Uh, right. Exactly. You ain't lying, dog. What the hell? Yeah. You, Your boy can come, but hey, man, oh, Sheila don't want your wife. <laughs> Sheila right. said, oh, I don't even know how you say that. Hey, oh, uh, Earl. <laughs> hey, man, let me all let you. The 4th of July thing. Listen, oh, uh, you welcome to come. Oh, uh, but, oh. Uh, Jackie, uh, Sheila and Jackie. Uh, 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 Rita, Rita, Rita don't want Sheila. Uh, come. Excuse me. I said, my wife said, you welcome, Earl. Earl, Earl you can come, dog. You know my, you my dude. But uh, Rita say, uh, Sheila can't come. You gotta come so low. <laughs> to the Fourth of July. No, 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 you misunderstand me. Dog, you good. You good. Come over, get yourself some, good. some Q, get some drinks, man. You know, have some nice music. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Rita don't want Sheila to come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Well, you know, because she, you know, because you know when she drank, I, it, it, it's fun, man. Look, I know it's all fun. It, it don't even bother me, man. But man, my girl be tripping, man. So look, I don't know how we gonna do this here, but you know, you welcome to come. Cause dog, oh, dog, really? dog, we dogs. Yeah. But uh, uh, ha ha he he, she can't come. <laughs> Rita cannot come. Yeah. Okay. Ha ha he he, Rita. Right. <laughs> How can I get my girlfriend to realize that she might be the problem? She is. They don't invite her nowhere. She's not really that likable to the group. None of them girls have said, you know what? Let's invite Rita. Ain't none of them said that. Listen, everybody knows. So they don't like her just because she's not married to him? And everybody know what else you're doing, dog. And the wives know it. So they know that your girl ain't going to make, she ain't going to make the race. Make the cut. So they already done cut her out. She ain't the one. Because you, cause you know, cause you know, man, you doing your thing. But now y'all mm-hmm. finna have this thing at your house. She ain't having her over there. So your question is, what do I do? Do I cancel the party or I cancel my girlfriend? But I'm sick of constantly validating her feelings. That's what's wrong. You always got to make her feel included in all of that. And you, you exhausted. I done done that before, dog. It's exhausting. You always got to explain. Dog, dog, she tired. 
Dog, 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 dog. She just had a long day. And he tired of that. Cancel 4th of July or my girlfriend. <laughs> All right, Steve. Uh, cool. Post your post your comments. He'll probably and, be happy. Yeah, <laughs> she will too. Post your comments on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM on Instagram and Facebook. And check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it is time now for Junior and Sports Talk. What you got, Junior? All right, Shirley, a little bad news in the NFL. Tony Saragusa has passed away oh. at the age of 55. Uh, he won a Super Bowl with the wow. Baltimore Ravens back Super Bowl, Super Bowl 35, I believe. He played with Ray Lewis. He was also a sideline reporter for Fox Sports mm-hmm. on Sunday. Uh, man, he's really known for his sense of humor, man. They nicknamed him the Goose, man. He died at 55 years old. So mm. condolences out to uh, his family and the Ravens yeah. community. Wow. Uh, I, I really liked him, Tony Sierra. That's man. early, man. Yeah, he was, man, he was cool. He was, he was cool. cool, man. He was cool, a great cool. player, man. That, one of the stories, mm-hmm. they said he came to training camp, man, and landed a helicopter on the 50-yard line at the facility. That was his entrance to the to camp. <laughs> I like I'm it. Here. Yeah. yeah, I'm here, man. So we're going to miss him. Also, it's, uh, Jalen Ferguson, another Ravens linebacker who's currently playing in his second season, uh, he passed away the other day, too. He's 26 mm. years old. He was currently on the on the Ravens roster. Uh, kind-spirited mm-hmm. person, according to Coach Harbaugh. So we want to send our condolences out to the Ferguson family as well. Uh, then in other news, we also know that uh, Herschel Walker is in news. Uh, I don't know if y'all seen this. But Herschel what? Walker, uh, th- if he has any chance of winning the Senate uh, 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 race in Georgia, he just needs to be quiet. Uh, Herschel Walker <laughs> just needs to stop talking. Okay, First with them kids. Now, now them kids then came out. Now he made another comment where what? he had made a comment saying that he, that he believes, you know, like he's going up again. He was talking about Stacey Abrams. She was on record for saying that Georgia was one of the worst states to live in. You've seen, yeah. probably seen that, yeah. that mm-hmm. commercial, right? Well, he told Stacey Abrams, find one of the other 51 states to live in. He Ooh. believes there are 52 Ooh. states. 50 if he just don't states. shut his mouth, there's no way he gonna win. <laughs> no, he don't even know how many states is in the union. <laughs> find one of the 51 other states to live in. Ooh, wow. I'm gonna, gonna, gonna tell you now. I'm gonna tell you right here, right here. I'm gonna tell you right here, right now. If you was gonna, up. Yeah. You was gonna live here. <laughs> <laughs> you got 51 other states, y'all. Used to live. You know what I'm saying? Come on, Excuse Herschel. me, yeah. Excuse me Mr. Walker. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. What Go is ahead. the 51st state, sir? What's the name of the 51st state? Well, now nah, you got now the you see, 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 That's why. That's why they got me running and you's ain't running. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. you yeah. don't know what you're talking about. Now nah, you's got to. Uh, Who is you? You's got <laughs> Russia. You just got out Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't keep talking, sir. All right. Thank you, Junior. Coming up uh, at the top of the hour, airlines are struggling to keep flight schedules in summer. Uh, the summer just got started. We'll talk about it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, the Juneteenth holiday was observed on Monday, as we all know, and it coincided with Father's Day, which meant there was a lot, a lot, a lot of traffic going on, a lot of traveling, people traveling. Um, Last Friday was the most popular air travel day of the year so far, according to the TSA. Now, close to 2.5 million people were screened last Friday at airport security checkpoints nationwide, and this surge in travelers could not have come at a worse time. A combination of rough weather, staff shortages, and infrastructure changes have left major carriers struggling to keep up. Nearly 9,000 flights were delayed within the U.S., and another 1,500 flights were canceled. United Airlines CEO said that the pilot shortage for the industry is real, and there simply aren't enough pilots, at least not for the next five-plus years. Uh, that may mess up a lot of summer travel plans, huh? Especially for the fourth of July coming up. So are, are you guys traveling this summer? I think we all are, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I just got I back. I mean, I yeah. traveled uh, mm-hmm. this past weekend and Monday. Yeah. yeah. But uh, we had no issues. No flight yeah. delays. Right. That's, but that's, this summer, what, though, uh, now that it's summer, yeah, a lot of people going to be traveling, Carla, going on um, vacation. Uh, Jackie wants yeah. to go to Cabo. She wants to take the kids to Cabo. 
Yes, we just got back. I want to go back. I actually want a place in Cabo. I've decided. <laughs> yeah, that's your favorite place. Is it, is it yeah. kid friendly though? Yeah, Cabo, mm -hmm. of course. In okay. Mexico, it's on the um, California. If you don't have no water park, my son is not gonna be happy. I gotta have a water park. <laughs> well, don't they have an ocean? That. Yeah, I mean, he no. got the biggest water park in the world called the yeah. Pacific. Pacific Ocean. But I will what say are you this. talking about? I will say this. The water in Cabo, the Pacific it's rough. Ocean, it's choppy. It's very, very uh -huh. choppy. It's, choppy. it's not uh -huh. like the Atlantic Ocean mm -hmm. when you go to the Caribbean this time of year. The water right. is more calm to me mm -hmm. on the uh, mm -hmm. Caribbean. But I, I love, you know, my two favorite places, mm -hmm. Bahamas and Cabo. I love those two. Mm. places a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, they but yeah, it was packed flights. in the airport though. Mm -hmm. It, was, it yeah. was packed. It was really and, packed. Man, you got to you got to have you got to have all the credentials at the airport. You got to have clear, you got to have TSA. If you yeah. get all that, it's a whole lot easier. Mm -hmm. It's a whole mm -hmm. lot easier. When well, you get mm -hmm. TSA pre-check, guess who I saw in the airport when we were leaving going to Cabo? Oh, Yolanda we Adams. <laughs> Yolanda we know it wasn't Steve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it was Yolanda Adams. She told me to tell family, hey, yeah. good morning. Have, yeah. have you guys seen you her new show, Kingdom Business? I think it oh, is. I haven't yeah. seen it yet. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's yeah. like the gospel version of Empire. Mm -hmm. Oh. It is good. Oh, and Yolanda say, they is. Say to everybody for the Lord. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. Yolanda is playing a wicked character. Yes, yes. I love it. Uh huh. Yes. Tamar yes. Braxton. Kingdom is business. It. It's really good. Uh, mm -hmm. Kirk Franklin, one of the producers. Really good. So if you haven't seen it, check it out. Uh, Kingdom business. Really, really good. And we love Yolanda Adams. Yeah. Yes, On we this do. show, we love her. Mm hmm. Have mm -hmm. you guys ever thought about being uh, a pilot? Like the guys, have you ever thought about that when oh. you were little? You know, how little, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, when you were little. I just wanted yeah. the little wings with the little hat. That's all wings. I wanted. You mm -hmm. didn't want to learn how to fly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no. no. Mm -hmm. You did, Jerry? Yeah, I wanted to be an astronaut at one point in time. I wanted to be an astronaut. Did you really? Yeah, oh. I thought space was next door. That's what I thought. <laughs> I thought we were going to space. I thought we were going next door. I didn't know it was up out of the world. Then when I found out that, I, I killed that dream immediately. I, oh, you did? <laughs> yeah. A fire truck or something like that. Firemen sound good now. Now tell me, doesn't doesn't your sister work at NASA? Isn't? Yeah. Uh -huh. My sister Latanya. Mm -hmm. yeah, she used to work at NASA. Yeah, she's, she's a bad genius. Girl. You know, she speaks. Wow. She's, she's a genius. She speaks Japanese like fluently. She's a, she's mm -hmm. a bad girl. Yeah, genius. and such a sweet, oh, wow. sweet person too. Yeah. But a pilot, no, no. Nah. no. no I'm nervous enough it. just getting no. in the plane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the anxiety of it all. You I can't know, drive my you car know. without losing my mind. I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Seeing up in the air, I always applaud them. Though I think I think it's a, a, a amazing great job. job. Yeah, mm -hmm. amazing. All right, coming up at 20 minutes after the hour, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, ladies, we haven't forgotten about you. Uh, Just in time for the 4th of July holiday, Carla and I are having yet another Seagram's Escape Happy yeah. Hour on Facebook Live. Yes, we are. Uh, so mark your calendars, ladies. It is going down next Wednesday, June 29th at 4 p.m. Eastern. And of course, don't worry. We will remind you again next week, okay? Because we want you to be there. And we've teamed up with Seagram's Escapes to give away $1,500 cash. We want you to create your own summer escape. To enter and get rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. $1,500 cash could be yours. Yes. Get all the info. Oh, I drank with you for fifteen hundred. I drank with you for fifteen hundred. What? Let them share. Let me so. tell them where they can the get the info. You got for fifteen hundred. <laughs> Go to steveharveyfm.com. Sip happiness with Seagram's escapes. Okay. We're ready. Let's. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna have fun. Yeah, we're gonna yes, have a yeah. lot of fun. What flavor y'all like? Jamaican me happy. That's what uh, we on right now. Jamaican me happy. Jamaican me happy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. So yes. good. Summer so good. escapes. Get ready for the 4th of July holiday weekend. Fireworks, all of that. Tommy, do it for me one time, please. You know how you used to do it. Oh, <laughs> ladies, 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 ladies. <laughs> How my ladies doing out there? We fun. <laughs> <laughs> we 
We got more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at 33 minutes after the hour. We will play a round of Would You Rather right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now to play a round of Would You Rather. Would you rather wash your own car, wash your own car, or would you rather go to the car wash? Simple. That's stupid. (laughs) Go to the car wash. Well, what, I mean, it's too time. hot. You know how hot it is? Yeah, but you know what? A lot of people like to wash their own cars. You're going to die washing your car right now. <laughs> well, at, at one point It could be any time. A was my only option. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't afford to go I'm not mad wide. at you. It, <laughs> and it's still some people's only yeah. option. Yeah, people, it relaxes not, people. I used to yeah. have to wash my mama car in the driveway because, mm-hmm. before I could yeah. drive it. You got to yeah. wash the car. Mm-hmm. That's be right. clean. I was That's the right. car wash. I yeah. love a clean car. Yes. All right, would you rather guacamole or queso? Guac. Mm. Ooh. Ooh, I like uh-huh. cheese. Because you love I cheese. Like the cheese. Uh-huh. <laughs> Ooh, that queso. Oh. You, you, yeah. Let me tell you something. You go to uh, uh, Papacito's and, uh-huh. and get that queso, and they're going to put put that ground beef, ground meat in it. Oh, uh-huh. Lord. You yes. don't understand. So, which one would you rather, guaco or, the, the or cheese? Queso? The cheese. I'm okay, okay. So, all right. Guacamole. But if I'm in Cabo, the guacamole. Uh, yes. <laughs> Can I just say, Tasha we a... was overdosing on the guacamole. <laughs> Cabo. <laughs> Cabo. Remember My baby we was went? like, and a side of guacamole. She could have been getting dessert and a side of guacamole. Remember when the show went <laughs> down yes. there? Boy, when we was yes. over there, oh we was tequila God. and guacamole, guacamole at 10 a.m. At 10 a.m. <laughs> Yeah. Every single day. <laughs> Every day. Every day. All right. On your fried fish, mm-hmm. would you rather eat hot sauce or tartar sauce? That's hot it. sauce. Hot hey. sauce. Yeah, hey. I'm a hot sauce girl. See, hey. see, see, y'all ain't doing it right. Y'all don't, I know ooh, you y'all love don't tartar. know how to eat. Uh-huh. Y'all don't know how to eat. What if you get eat? you some ketchup and tartar sauce and hot and sauce hot together sauce. and mix that uh-huh. yeah, and I'm dip your that. fish in that, mm-hmm. that's a good now eat. you <laughs> got some. <laughs> Yeah. Now nah, you talking about eating, nah? You yeah. talking about eating? Nah, I just want the hot All right, sauce and a piece of bread. All right, here we go. Keep it on food, okay? Keep it on food. Potato salad or coleslaw? Would you rather potato salad or coleslaw? Depends, Depends on, on who, who made, made either one. That Depends on who made either one. Of them. That's true. That's true. You, you got your hands on my food. We gotta know who yeah. made this. Who made both of them? Because if Becky with the good hair made the potato salad and the raisins and all that, mm-mm, mm-mm. I'll punch your potato salad. If you put some raisins like in there, we're gonna whoop your ass. I promise. Oh, yeah. No, get please do not put raisins in my potato salad. Soon, raisins man, go in mind. raisin bran. Yeah. That's it. Hence the name. All right. Would you rather Cupid Shuffle or the Wobble? Cupid, oh, that's Cupid my boy. Uh huh. That's my Cupid boy, man. baby. That's my dude. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. That's today's version of Would You Rather. Now, coming up, it is the last break of the day on this Friday. We'll have some closing remarks coming up at 49 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Last break of the day. We've had a great morning today. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, we yes, we did. Time. We had fun today. Uh, Steve, it's time for you now to take us home with your closing remarks. What you got for us today, Steve? Well, this is going to be short and to the point, I think. I just want to remind everybody something, that your dreams can come true if you're willing to fight for them. You have to fight for your dreams. You have to fight for the life of your dreams. You have to fight to be free. You have to fight to be an entrepreneur. You have to fight to be successful. You have to fight the naysayers when you say, I'm going to leave my job. You have to fight the naysayers when you say, I want a better job. You have to fight some forces out there when you go, you know what? I'm going to leave here to pursue a better position at another company. You're going to have to fight for it. Change requires a fight. It just does. It just does. I don't know why it is, man, but there's people always in our lives somewhere who are going to fight us on decisions that we make about ourselves. I don't know why that is, but it seems to happen for everybody. All of us have to fight to get through to the other side. You have to fight through the wall of fear. 
You have to fight through doubt. You have to fight through confusion. You got to fight through the naysayers. You got to fight through haters. You got to fight through the fact that it didn't go your way. You have to fight through the fact that you got up and you just wasn't feeling yourself today. You got to find a way to fight through. You got to find something in you that makes you keep fighting even when you don't. There's a poem, a stanza in a poem that says, if you can force your heart, your nerve, and your sinew, to serve its turn long after it has gone, when there is nothing left within you except the will to say to them, hold on. You have to fight like that. Now, the the funny thing about that line in that poem, I think that's uh, if. If. And uh, the the, the stanza says, if you can force your heart, your nerve, and sinew, Sinew is the fibers that holds all your insides together. They call that sinew, those tendons or whatever it is, that that stuff, that that there's lines and cords and fibers that hold your heart and organs and all that stuff in place. If you could force your heart, nerve, and sinew to serve your turn long after it is gone, when there's nothing left within you except the will to say to them, hold on, that's how you got to fight. That's how you got to fight. And it's all right, but make it a good fight. Don't lay down. Don't let nobody punk you out your dreams. Don't let nobody trick you out of what God has for you. Don't let the fact that you got to fight stop you from fighting. Life is a fight, man. It's a dog fight out here. They're not walking money up to your house. I'm sorry. They're not passing out checks. They don't send free money to nobody's house. You got to do something to get it. And if you really want to get it, you are involved in a fight, like it or not. That is what we are in. We are in a fight. So get with it. Stop punking out. It ain't time for that. You in a fight. We are in a fight. Let's go. That's what it is every day. And if you think it's not, Keep sitting up in here like letting life slap you upside your head because that's exactly what it's going to do. You're in a fight, folks. You're in a fight for your dreams. You are in a fight for the life God has for you. You are in a fight for your future. You are in a fight for your promotion. You're in a fight for advancement. You're in a fight to do life better. You are in a fight to have more. You are in a fight to succeed. You are in a fight to overcome. You are in a fight to beat illness. You are in a fight every day of your life. What you think this is? You got to fight and make it a good fight. Here's the tip to fighting. If you have God in your life, you will not lose the fight. Period. That's all I got to tell you. If you have God in your life, you will not lose the fight. If you include him in the process, see, in all of my fights, he is my partner. He my tag team partner. When I tag him in, everybody in the ring need to clear it. All the people that take me to court falsely, all the people who lie about me falsely, all the people who try to bring me down for self-gain, I'm not over here by myself. I am protected by a scripture, Isaiah 54, 17, that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Come for me if you want to. I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to hand you the scripture and get out the way. I've seen him do it for me too many times. But I know I'm in a fight. I just don't go to the fight alone. You can't take a knife to a gunfight. Put God in your life. And you cannot lose the fight because that's what we in. We in a fight. You feel me? Yes, sir. Drop the mic, baby. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That was a good one, Steve. Mm. That's on it, though. That sounds like you still fighting. That's on it. Yeah. (laughs) Nothing over. (laughs) In a fight. Ooh, that was good. You got to fight him. You got to fight for your dreams.